Now we are going to discuss Hirschsprung's disease. Hirschsprung's disease. Clear? So see what is the incidence of Hirschsprung's disease? The incidence of Hirschsprung's disease is one in five thousand live births. So incidence it is one in five thousand live births. Now what is the problem in Hirschsprung's disease? It is also known as a ganglionosis. It means there is absence of ganglion cells in Hirschsprung's disease. Now see, we discussed that in GIT there are two kinds of nerve plexus. One is known as Meesner's plexus and one is known as Arbach plexus. So in Hirschsprung's disease, there is absence of ganglion cells in both Arbach plexus as well as Meesner's plexus. So what is the problem here? It is characterized by absence of ganglion cells. So there is absence of ganglion cells in both Arbach plexus and Meesner's plexus. Right? Arbach plexus and Meesner's plexus. Okay? What is the most common site of Hirschsprung's disease? The most common site is rectum followed by sigmoid. It can be seen in small intestine. It is reported in small intestine also, but the most common site is the rectum followed by sigmoid. Okay? There was one question which was asked in names that Hirschsprung's disease is a type of neurochristopathy. So what is the meaning of neurochristopathy? Here there is failure of migration of neural crest cells to colonic mucosa. So it is characterized by failure of migration of neural crest cells to colonic mucosa. So it's a type of neurochristopathy. It's a type of neurochristopathy. Clear? Now see what's going to happen in Hirschsprung's disease. So here you can see this patient is having normal colon and rectum. But this is the patient of Hirschsprung's disease. And what you are going to notice that here there is absence of ganglion cells where in the sigmoid as well as in the rectum. So what you have noticed the proximal part of the colon can you see it is dilated. So the proximal part of colon which is normal that is dilated or enlarged. And the affected segment is contracted. So here can you see there is shrunken or contracted rectum. So imagine that this is the rectum which is affected. And what happens? This is the proximal segment which is dilated. So there can be two presentations. See one that this is the patient. Clear? This patient is having shorter segment. Now see what happens in Hirschsprung's disease. See the affected segment is contracted. And there is dilatation of this proximal normal segment. Now imagine there are two patients. See the first patient. This is the patient which is having shorter segment involvement. So here can you see? This is the involved segment. And if you see the second one. Here the segment which is involved is longer. Clear? And narrower. So this is A and this is B. Clear? So in patients of Hirschsprung's disease. Signs and symptoms are dependent upon the length of segment involved and the severity of contraction. So if you see this A, this patient might be asymptomatic throughout the life or this patient might be having only constipation. But if you see this patient B, which is having longer segment of involvement, so there is involvement of a longer segment and it is more narrower. So what is the problem? There might be this presentation that just after birth, this patient was not able to pass what meconium. So, signs and symptoms, age of presentation, both of these are dependent upon the length of segment involved and the severity of contraction. Okay. So, see the clinical features. Clinical features. So, we are going to divide it into three groups. The patients who are symptomatic just after birth. So, patient symptomatic just after birth second group patient is symptomatic after first few weeks of life after first few weeks of life okay and what are the symptoms in older children and adults older children and adults okay so since 
the patients who are having longer segment involvement and there is severe contraction in these patients what's the problem first just after birth these patients are having abdominal distension and this was the question in neat that what is the most common presentation of hirschsprung's disease the most common presentation of hirschsprung's disease is abdominal distension so this is the first question is the most common presentation what is the second problem there is delayed passage of meconium so usually these patients are not going to pass meconium within 24 hours so second problem there is delayed passage delayed passage of meconium okay so this newborn is not able to pass meconium within 24 hours clear now see after first few weeks of life even these patients are having abdominal distension there is failure to gain weight so that's known as failure to thrive and these patients have chronic constipation so these patients have abdominal distension in these patients we are going to notice chronic constipation clear and there is failure to thrive so child is not gaining weight failure to thrive okay and there are certain patients where there is short segment involvement and it is wider also so generally these patients have only constipation so what kind of constipation off and on constipation so these patients have chronic constipation clear so generally you have noticed what that abdominal distension constipation these are the features of hirschsprung's disease fecal soiling is not a feature this was asked many times in exam fecal soiling is not a feature okay so fecal soiling is not a feature of hirschsprung's disease now how we are going to investigate and how we make the diagnosis what is the gold standard investigation or investigation of choice for diagnosis so in these patients there is absence of ganglion cells and we have to document the absence so what we go for biopsy what kind of biopsy we go for rectal biopsy we have two options we can go for full thickness biopsy as well as suction biopsy which one is preferred we prefer suction biopsy because there is increased morbidity with full thickness biopsy clear so how we make the diagnosis diagnosis investigation of choice for diagnosis and it's the rectal biopsy clear so what kind of rectal biopsy is preferred it's the suction biopsy suction biopsy is preferred over full thickness biopsy because of lesser morbidity when we perform the rectal biopsy what are the histopathological findings you see so first there is absence of ganglion cells means there is a ganglionosis so there is a ganglionosis second thing which you are going to find is hypertrophied nerve trunks so what else you are going to find hypertrophied nerve trunks nerve trunks clear and there is acetylcholine esterase staining which is positive so acetylcholine esterase staining and this is positive so these are the histopathological findings even this is asked in pediatrics as well as in surgery so how we are going to manage see generally the patients who are symptomatic just after birth they have signs and symptoms of obstruction why because longer segment is involved and what happens there is obstruction so generally in these patients surgery is required now depending upon the length of involved segment we have different treatment options so see what are the treatment options if a patient is having short segment disease in these cases we go for extended myectomy so first if a patient is having short segment disease clear in these cases we go for extended myectomy extended 
myectomy. Clear? And if a patient is having long segment disease, generally these are the newborns. So in these patients, since there is obstruction, so first what we do, we perform the temporary colostomy. So you perform the temporary colostomy. When the general condition of this patient improves, patient is going to gain some weight, and then we go for definitive operation. Clear? So what we do? If a patient is having long segment disease, so in these patients, first we go for temporary colostomy okay followed by definitive operation simple and the question which is frequently asked that what are the names of those definitive operations so we perform Swenson, Duhamel or Sove the name is what are the various names it's the Swenson Duhamel and Sove. These are the names of definitive procedures of operation. Now see, this question was asked in NEET PG 2020 and there was an image based question. See what was the image? See, similar images were given in the exam. So what you can notice here, here you can notice that here the rectum is contracted. Can you see? Here the rectum is contracted. Okay, in the first image and if you see this second image, what you can notice that this sigmoid colon is contracted. So there was barium edema of a newborn baby where the sigmoid colon was contracted and in one there was contracted rectum. It means what's the problem? These patients are having Hirschsprung's disease and what we do generally the part which is abnormal where there is absence of ganglionic cells generally we are going to excise it and we perform the anastomosis so how we treat it so generally in such patients can you see this is the disease segment without nerve cells or ganglions so we are going to remove that disease segment and we perform the primary anastomosis this is the definitive treatment clear but generally after new after birth these newborns are not very stable they have obstruction so at that time we perform temporary colostomy when the general condition of patient is going to improve then we go for the definitive operation so this is how we manage the patients of Hirschsprung's disease